Hi everyone, this is Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. I am excited to be participating in the Cards by Kendra 1K Hop. A bunch of us have gotten together to celebrate with Kendra in her reaching 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is such an awesome accomplishment. I hope to get there myself one day. So for this hop, Kendra asked us to case one of her creations, and case means copy and share everything. Um, there are some other iterations. You might have heard me say it on some other uh, videos of mine before, but that's what we're going with, copy and share everything. Um, so you could take something from her YouTube channel or from one of her sketches um, or one of her other cards that are on Instagram that may not have been made into a video. So I decided to use one of her cards that she made for Sassy and Crafty's YouTube channel a few months back where she took um, a the mountain and trees from one of the stamp sets and used her Copic markers to create a really awesome um, like sunset or sunrise and it came out beautiful. It was really graphic and very cool so that is the card that I will be casing today. Just a couple of other things. You can find all of the videos in this hop by using the hashtag cards by Kendra 1k hop. I'll of course have that listed in the description box below so you can do a search to see everybody that is participating and what's really cool for you guys, the viewers, is that there will be a prize on every YouTube channel that is participating in this hop. So make sure that you leave some love um, for everybody that you have stopped by to visit uh, so that you have a chance of winning. There are a bunch of awesome, awesome sponsors. So good luck. Um, and like I said, make sure you leave some love for everybody. And if you haven't already subscribed to Kendra's channel, please do so. And I would love it if you also subscribe to mine, if you are not, um, already a subscriber and make sure you hit that notification bell on the side. So this way you find out whenever I post a new video. So we are going to get started with this card. I am going to be using the mountain layering stencil set from Erin Lee Creative. I'm going to use Copics just like Kendra did for my skyline. Um, and we're going to hand draw some little trees and I'm using some Altenew Crisp dye inks for actually stenciling. Now, I'm assuming you watched the very beginning of this video, so you would have seen Kendra's card that I am casing. I made sure to pop that up in the beginning so that you knew what I was working with. Um, and we're going to get started. So I'm going to put this off to the side. We're going to take our very first layer. And I'm just going to line this up here. I'm going to get a little bit of washi tape and just tape this down and a little bit more washi tape to put on my card. The paper that I am using is from Stampendous. This is the paper that I normally work with when I'm using Copics. It is not what I usually use when I am working with watercolor markers. However, we will be using a singular watercolor marker today for the trees. So I have the warm gray set from Altenew. We're going to start with morning frost for the top layer because we don't want that to be really dark. I might need to go in with the second shade, which is evening gray, if it's a little too light, but we'll see what happens. I do have a little bit of residual ink on my brush from um, using it prior to this, but I don't think that there's very much on here, so we should be okay. We want to keep this light. We just want to have some snow-capped mountains, but we don't want to make them super gray. And since I only taped the top, we can see that that is perfect. That's just what we want. A little bit of shading here and there, but pretty light. So we're going to take this layer off. I don't even think that I'm going to need to add any more to that. And then we're going to take the second layer. I'm going to keep this taped down second layer here and it lines up so easily you can see the cutouts here this is one of the easiest layering stencils that you could work with for sure and I'll have all of my supplies listed in the description box below so if you have any questions or you may have missed what I am working with it'll all be linked below We're not going to go too heavy with this. This is the evening gray. This is the second 
of the four colors in the set. You don't have to get the set, of course, um, but if you wanted to, you could. Now you may notice that my stencil is hanging off of the edge here and it's cut in on this side. I wanted my mountains to be a little bit more centered on my card base, so um, I am going to be trimming this down quite a bit, just so that it's evened up a little. I'm gonna remove the tape because really should be over here behind the mountain, but that's okay. We'll worry about that later. We can keep it in place. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in with, I'm gonna keep this stencil on here. I'm gonna go in with Moon Rock to darken it a little bit. And I can see that I'm shifting this just a bit. So I wanna make sure that I don't move that. Okay, this is Moon Rock. This is the third. I'm gonna go up from the bottom. This brush is not super saturated with ink. Um, and this is also not the paper that I normally use for ink blending. Often I will use Bristol Smooth Cardstock. This works okay, but I decided to use this one, as I mentioned before, simply because I am going to be using my Copics. And I don't love using Copics on Bristol. Let's see how that looks. Cool. I'm good with that. We're going to add our top layer now. And this makes everything look a little bit more graphic. I'm just going to line this up. Like so. And my kitty is saying hello to us. That's tomato. This is lava rock. And this is the darkest of the shades. Okay, our ink blending is all done. And now we can start playing with our Copics. This is the first time I've used this stencil set and I like it a lot. I think it's really neat. Okay, so in Kendra's video, she used a T-square. I have this, this is from um, the Misty. I'll cut this all down later. We don't need to worry about that right now. I might, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I might give up using this piece in a little while because I tend to get frustrated with straight, straight lines. So <laughs> we'll see how much patience I have. I'm gonna zoom in for us a little bit. There we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna go right across the top here. I have a bunch of colors. This first one is B97. And again, I'll list all of the marker colors in the description box below. The next color I'm using is B93. And I'm just butting it up against the edge of my card here. I think this one's getting a little dry and I just totally went across my mountain. Oh well, that's okay. Maybe we'll add some clouds or something to it. <laughs> These things happen, right? That's all right. We'll figure out a way to fix it. I was getting a little overzealous with my coloring. We can probably lift it up with the colorless blender too. Now I have BV13. So I just need to watch where I have that line for the mountain and just be really careful. Bring it down a little bit more. And we're just going to continue along like this.
our sky is done and off camera I trimmed down the panel so that that extra white piece that I had is gone. I, it is now a four by five and a quarter inch panel and I tried using my ink, uh, my colorless blender to remove the color and it really wasn't working so I took my white Posca pen and kind of filled in that area and that, that helped a bit. So I feel like we need a sentiment here. So I have another Erin Lee Creative set here. This is called Winter Magic and we're going to use the Lifting You Up with one of my favorite inks. This is Twilight from Imagine or Sukuneko. It's the Versifying Claire and these inks stamp so crisply. So we have the Lifting You Up and we're going to just free range stamp the sentiment. There we go. Perfect. I love how crisp these inks are when you stamp them. Okay, so now we're going to add some trees. Don't be scared, guys. I promise it'll be fine. We're going to use a Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen in black, and we're going to draw some trees. It'll be okay. I really like the trees that uh, Kendra had on her card. If you're scared, you can either stamp them, you can stencil them, or you can omit them completely because this card looks nice the way it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep our marker straight up like this. And we're going to draw a line wherever you want to have your trees, just like that. And then we're going to just start swooping them, the branches out, starting off smaller at the top. And as we work our way down, we're going to get bigger. You don't want to have a heavy stroke. You want to keep it super light, which is why we're using the brush straight up like this. If you were to start using it on its side, you're going to get the, br the bristles to kind of splay out a bit um, and the tree is going to wind up being a little fatter. If that's what you want, that's fine. There's a billion ways to do trees. This is just the way I decided to do it on this card. So keeping my brush straight up or my marker and I'm getting wider as I go down. You do not need to make these perfect. If you were go to go to, for a walk in the forest, you would see that all of the trees are different. None are the same. None of them are totally perfect. And you can kind of play with them how you want. I did do some sketches beforehand just to make sure that this was the way I really wanted to do it. But I'm just kind of squiggling back and forth. See that? Let's zoom in a little bit more. And I'm just going back and forth. It's super sketchy. And that's the look I wanted. I don't want them to be heavy. I want to keep the whole thing, although the trees are being done in black, I wanted to keep them airy and light, if that makes sense, even though they're black. We're going to vary the heights of the trees. So you can see this one's the tallest. We'll bring this guy up a little bit more so that it's a little taller than that one. And we're just gonna keep going with just a few more trees. I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna put one over here, maybe a couple of them. What would Bob Ross do? He would just, he would just keep going with the trees. Okay, so we're going to just add this in, getting a little bit bigger at the bottom. And if you wanted to add, like see this branch here, I'm going to add a few little pieces coming off of it. And this one too, just to kind of feather it out a bit. And then I'm going to add a bigger one. And now my dogs are probably going to start barking. <laughs> Do you guys have pets that, if you film videos that are constantly making noise, I try to film when it's really quiet in the house, but you just never know when there's going to be a dog that walks by and sets them off. There you go. There they go. That's probably just a person. They're not getting super excited. So that could... Uh, Nope, maybe there is a dog out there. They're going to start howling now, you guys. <laughs> Welcome to my world. 
This is what they do. They're so funny. They'll stop together at one in one second, probably. Nope. There's definitely dogs outside. Do your dogs do this, if you have dogs? <laughs> and they're done. The person has walked by. <laughs> Well, hopefully you were amused by that. It always amuses me when they howl. My little pups. Okay. How's that? I think they were good. I think that I'm gonna just add some ground just to fill in this base so that the trees actually feel grounded instead of just being oddly placed in front of these mountains. That's better. They look planted now, right? There we go. I know it's probably hard to see that part on camera because I'm working on a black glass mat, but you can see that I sort of grounded those trees now. And again, if you don't want to draw trees, you can omit it. If you have stencils you want to use or stamps, you can do that. Whatever you are comfortable with. Right? Okay, so now we are going to put this on our card base. And I think that since I had to trim this down, I'm going to add some color behind it. Let me zoom my camera out for you. There we go. What do we think? I think that it needs some color. So let me get some color for us. Okay, so I really want to have a shimmery background on my card base. So I've pulled some fireworks sprays. These all have a great shimmer in them. So I have Paris Dusk, Dandelion, and Tangelo, but I don't have a lavender color. So we're gonna kind of skirt the issue a little bit and make our own by using some shaded lilac in Distress Ink. And I'm gonna mix it with Sheer Shimmer Spritz in Sparkle. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to take some of my shaded lilac and I'm going to add it to my craft mat here, which I know is going to be a little tricky for you to see, and I apologize about that, but I'm going to shake up the sheer shimmer sparkle, make sure that there's no mica in the bottom, and I'm going to spritz this on here a little bit so that we can activate that ink. Meanwhile. I am also going to start by using the blue. So we're going to follow the colors that we have here. So I'm going to start with the blue. And Paris Dusk is a little dark for this, but it'll be fine. So I'm opening this up. I have my Princeton Snap Round brush in a size 6. And I'm going to just swipe this across the top. Now if I were spraying this on, it would be a little bit more concentrated and darker. I'm going to try not to make it super dark because I want it to be similar to what the background is. But I'm not going to go crazy with it. It's just so that we have a bit of interest back there and some shine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and match it up and get kind of an idea. The blues are different, but I don't, I don't mind it. So I'm going to rinse off my brush. We're done with Paris Dusk. And now we're going to dip into the shaded lilac mixture that we made. And you don't need to use a lot of ink for this. So I've got it off to the side here. I'm just mixing it up with the Sheer Shimmer Spritz. And since the Paris Dusk is still wet, it's going to blend really nicely. It doesn't need to be very dark. It doesn't need to be the same shade. We're just giving the idea that that sunrise or sunset is continuing on. Beautiful. Okay, so I realized that I didn't have a pink shade, so I grabbed Abandoned Coral and I also spritzed it with the Sheer Shimmer Spritz and we're going to just Get that on there like so. I'm sorry about the dogs barking again. You just never know when somebody's going to walk by and irritate them. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. I've got my dandelion here. I'm just dipping that in. You want to be careful when you're using a brush in here that you don't tip it over. It's a small bottle. 
I'm just going to work that into the abandoned coral shimmer that we made. And I'll be sure to hold this up to the camera when we're done. But this is a fun way to kind of expand, you know, your use of your colors, whether they're inks or um, distress oxides or your sprays or whatever. It's just fun to kind of paint them onto your background. And if you've watched my videos before or seen me do any Facebook lives, you know that that's something that I really like to do is, you know, use my sprays on my card bases a lot, but in a painted form. I'm just going to kind of blend these together a little bit, just like so. And then I'm going to run this along the edge. And then we should have a very nice shimmer for our card base. See that shimmer happening in there? Isn't that nice? Hopefully when I photograph this, the pictures will really show it. So we're gonna let that dry. I've got my adhesive on the back of my card panel and now we are just going to adhere it. Painted areas have been dried, and this is our finished card. Really pretty. A little different from Kendra's, but I think it's cool, and Kendra's is beautiful in her own way. Um, so that's it. I think that that brings us to the end. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you like this card. I hope it gives you some ideas for things that you can you know, use from your own stash in this way. And be sure to hop along for Kendra's 1K hop. And again, if you search the hashtag cards by Kendra 1K hop, you'll be able to find everybody that is in the hop. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay safe. Be well. Peace out.